Hello lovely friends. Oh, I've got a treat for you today. We're going down to the craft studio in St. Austell, Cornwall. We're going to have a little sneak peek into what happened in this workshop I had recently with these beautiful ladies and these amazing pieces of art. This is Talent Tuesday and my wonderful friend Kim has got a creation. Please give her some love and support. I'll put the link to her creation today in my comments and description below. I found out which colours I'd like to use before the workshop and laid it all out so that we could get straight down to mixing paints. And these are the paints that we're using today to feature one student's piece of art, which is a reverse flower dip in pinks and purples. Oh my goodness, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'll give you a little sneak peek of some of the pieces of art that the students created. And first of all, just want to show you around this little place. It's a tiny little place, but it's got everything you need. It's got a sink, toilet, little kitchen, car park, and table big enough for, say, five to six students and a teacher. So here's their little tiles they did. Two tree swipes, three tree swipes, four tree swipes. <laughs> and this is where I kept their paintings so they could dry without any dust or dog hair or anything lying on them. So this is a sneak peek of today's painting, the one at the top in pinks and purples. And I'll show you the superstars, my students at the end. Such a joy watching them create. Thank you so much to all my subscribers and to my lovely member Jill from MJ Fluid Art. You really do help keep my channel going. So let's go and have a look at the purple and pink reverse flower dip today that Margaret, one of my amazing students, created. I was just so proud of all four of the ladies for their wanting to explore something different and try something new and the delight they had on their faces as they were creating. Let's go and see Margaret's way of creating her beautiful flower. This is Margaret's first time at using a deep edged canvas as it was for all the ladies on that day. And they just see how beautiful they looked as the paint just dripped down the side. So Margaret's just covering her base here and she's been really careful just using her stirrer to make sure the gaps are covered. And then she decides to experiment with what it's like just smoothing it across the surface and then to finish off, she picks it up and she's just tilting it slightly so that any of the excess paint is slipping down the sides nicely and she's really taking her time about it. It's so different, isn't it, using a deep edge canvas and using fluid paint because I don't know about you, but I often forget what my thumbs are doing. So I have to really make sure they're out to the edge. So she's tilting it really nicely and she's doing it over pot there so she can catch any of the excess paint and then she'll scoop up the rest of it and put it back in. It's a lovely practice to get into so you're not wasting too much of it um, and I tend to scoop up all the extra bits and put them back into the pot so it can be used another time. So the moment we've all been waiting for the pouring of the paints and the different colours so let's explore how Margaret does her flower today. I'm so pleased when I realised that I'd managed to capture one of the students paintings on camera. I only had one camera set up so I could record what I was doing for teaching in the future. And I thought, oh my goodness, if I zoom in, I can see exactly what one of the ladies is doing. So here we go, Margaret. Here's your piece. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm so proud of you all. And I'm so pleased I was able to capture yours on camera. So you can see what she's using here. She's got her beautiful iridescent blue black and that's the first colour that she's choosing to put on her black base. So this carton is from the bottom of a water bottle and it's got some lovely grooves in it so the paint can easily slide down into the paint. Depending on the grooves that you have, you have a different effect. You can have bigger petals with these grooves and if you want smaller petals, you can use one with thinner grooves. So next on is gold. And I was really interested to see how Margaret chose to layer her paint. Because of course, you can use the same colours and have a different outcome with different layering. 
and different amounts of paint. And she used a wonderful amount of paint on each of the layers, just enough. It was interesting going along because it reminded me when I first started to do these flower dips and when some, when the students were painting, they were saying, oh no, I've dropped a bit here and I've dropped a bit there. And they soon realized that, that was just part of fluid art and just to go with it and enjoy it and make it part of the painting. And this certainly did. Did you see that little spillage just there? It came out beautifully. So next on was the pink, iridescent pink. And now we've got iridescent purple. These are all Pebio paints and all the ladies mixed up their own paints to the consistency they wanted. And I found that the fluidity of the way that Margaret was mixing her paint was really, really good. It was spot on. It wasn't too thick, it wasn't too thin. It was just fantastic. So after layering all the colors, she then lifted it up and moved it in to the space. Can you see where the grooves now, where she can put the paints into, are gonna fall in the gap in between the petals that she's already created. Don't you just love those beautiful purples and pinks that you can get in some of the winter flowers? Can you think of any winter flowers that come to mind? I'm thinking of crocuses, cyclamen, you can get winter jasmine, um, winter clematis and the winter lily. There's so many winter beautiful flowers, aren't there? So in this reverse flower dip today, which was created initially by Fiona Art, we are taking this flower and we're using another technique used by Fiona's creative canvas. Both Fiona's have inspired me so much with this particular reverse flower dip and I'll show you the addition to, as we reveal the flower shortly. So as Margaret is layering up this flower with gold now you can see how she's layered the second petal differently for a different effect. Can you see how fluid the gold is? It's beautiful. I'll be zooming in shortly to show you exactly how this turned out, but just enjoy the layering, enjoy the music, and I'll come back shortly as we do the part that everyone has a little squeal over because they think they're gonna ruin it, but it actually is the making of the reverse flower dip.
this was a really exciting moment. So we dampened the serviette and we got something that was bigger than the canvas so you can just have it as a hole over the canvas and it covers every bit of the paint and then you lightly pat down on top of the paint and this is the moment where the students are saying oh no is it going to ruin the cut is it going to ruin the flower and um, just their excitement then so watch as Margaret pats it all down and then she gathers it up really carefully all the four corners picking them up at the edges into the center and then gently lifting what do you think is going to happen and did you notice that she put in gold in the center i just suggested putting that in so it gives a nice auric effect and then it highlights the stamens so watch she's Look at that. And you can see a beautiful, nice centre as she picks it up. That happens sometimes. And other times the centre appears a bit more readily um, when you spin a little bit. But she'd use a lovely amount of paint on that one. Yeah. So she's using her blowtorch now to get rid of any of the bubbles. And then she's going to move it over to the spinner, spin it out a little bit and then start to put the stamens in. So the white paint is waiting for her to do her spin and to add a little bit more base paint around the flower to allow the flower to flow out when she's spinning. So there we go, onto the spinner, spun it out and now she's adding the stamens. And you can see how when she'd spun it, the center part of the flower became very slightly larger and now she's just putting in the dots and we, we turned the flower around so we could see which angle we wanted the stamens to go. So she's really gently put the palette knife in and, and brought the stamen down using the cocktail stick in the middle of that dot and then literally just gently bring it down. I just had to tell you that there because that's not there. So here are the students paintings today from this beautiful workshop recently where they just had such fun and I'm just so proud of them all. I'm so proud of Margaret for showing her piece today. And don't forget that when you try something, so many people think, I can't do that, or I don't know how it's going to turn out. But that's half the joy of fluid art. And if you give something a try, you never know how it's going to turn out. So there's Margaret and her painting there. Kathy took a photo and showed me hers at home too. And you can see all four of them here what beautiful paintings and four beautiful ladies and I'm so in awe of their colour palette and their artistry amazing thank you to all my wonderful subscribers for being here thank you for my lovely member my new member Jill from MJ Fluid Art please check out her channel and see beautiful creations this is a talent Tuesday so let's go and see what the talented amazing Kim from Kim's our alchemy has created today i'll put the link to her video in the description and comments below and don't forget that your art is a piece of you so it's very special take good care of it i hope to see you again soon take care now bye